Hey, Space Watchers, welcome to our special interview today. Space Watch Global asks its staff, friends, contributors to review 2020 and provide an outlook into 2021. These personal reviews are being usually published during the current holiday season on our website, but today we do that live. For that special occasion, I'm proud to have a very special guest, a friend and a wonderful human with me, Frank Salzgeber, Head of Innovation and the Venture Office in the Directorate of Telecommunication Integrated Applications at the European Space Agency. With whom can I talk better about the future and better about this last year than with you, Frank? So welcome to the show. You have also been very good, very good, thank you. So you have also been my guest uh, in one of the first Space Cafes in May this year when we talked about entrepreneurship and ESAR with that series. We finished last week with our episode 38 already and more to come in the next year. So I'm Thorsten Kreening, your host today and publisher of spacewatch.global and we are a Switzerland-based online platform for information in and about space and new space activities in a geopolitical context. Let's get it started, Frank. Besides COVID, what are the three most important events in 2020 for you? Yeah, and I think uh, uh, warm greetings also to the people uh, outside and watching the video. It's uh, just uh, congratulations also to the show during the year. It was fantastic. We saw a lot of friends um, going to events and we all know that events was being at events was pretty tough. So I take three, four, I, even four small events, which I think were special for myself and maybe for some others. And I start with uh, one of my favorite events, which I'm a big fan. And you had the, the organizers, I think, in November um, live on uh, Space Cafe. It's the Elon uh, Raman International Space Conference, which is normally every year in Israel. And this year I was partnering again with our colleagues from the uh, Elon Rahman Foundation and uh, offer from uh, the um, Israeli Space Agency because we were not only part of the event, we had also the, the pleasure to, to support them with their startup uh, week, which they were really teaching and uh, accelerating startup companies uh, in, in Tel Aviv uh, coming from all over Israel. And uh, why I think this event is so nice and for me it's very special because we were still all allowed to travel. And uh, this event is a super small event, but you have people from all over the world. And, and it's a little bit cozy. So really you have the time to talk to people more than one time. If you have these big EAC congresses, it's great, but you have hardly time to revisit the, the people. And um, Tel Aviv in January is an amazing place anyhow. So I think this one I really love because it's really getting together people all over the world. Um, another occasion, and I think you had them, in, in, uh, as I said, in November. Another event which was nice uh, was, uh, and these are all small events, huh? is the, the Space Investment Forums, which, which we did jointly with the EBA, EBAN Space, with the European Business Angel Network uh, Space, because uh, it was going across our directorates. It was uh, bringing more people together and space financing of VC financing in space is really a subject. Uh, and it was always, but now it's really hot. So I really like that because that was a, a joint ESA initiative. Uh, the European Space Week, uh, which uh, was also hybrid. All this stuff is not even hybrid, all online, uh, which I really like because uh, behind the organization was also the network which is running our business incubation centers, the brokers, uh, the partners, uh, the ambassadors. So people which were involved really in entrepreneurship and new space and, and pushing innovation. Um, so it's not a commission, commission maybe it's doing the branding, but the work is done by our network. And I think uh, this is also something nice because the point was uh, of the commissioner um, and, and, and the management to say how we can better collaborate. And I believe that would be the future. And the last event, which is more my, my, my personal one, uh, which I have watched and will watch over the Christmas is was reinvent from Amazon. So because that was about data, it was about space. And uh, so this is, I think, the interesting part that uh, we're not speaking only about the space industry and only uh, our close family that, uh, that big other players have uh, attached uh, their strategy to space. Absolutely. I mean, Amazon is doing 
not only the obvious, obvious things in space are with building the new Glen, new Glen and with, with, with Blue Origin, but also on the data center, I think their initiatives with the ground station are enormous. And for me, one of the, yeah, breathtaking or yeah, innovations, I would call it an innovation or to, to put in our teleport next to a data center. Um, and yeah, they're doing it now in big scale. And I think they will really disrupt this entire market dramatically. That's correct. And and I think I, I think it was last week where I had a, a very, very interesting call with the new uh, boss related to that. Uh, Clyde is uh, ex-major general from, uh, he was responsible for the uh, Space Force in the US, which I'm, to be honest, I'm not a big fan of it, even when I was two years in the Air Force, but I think space should be stay peaceful. But I think he has a great vision, a great overview, and I think we will see more to come. Great. So what are the underlying trends that are impacting and transforming our industry most? I mean, just from the what we have seen this year, I mean, it has his, its absolute challenges are, and, and we didn't want to go too much into into COVID, but could you see any trends that changed, transformed our industry? Because also we had to learn new. Yeah, and I think it's, it's uh, we heard so much about uh, the, the crisis, but in general, and uh, our group, uh, we're we're since sixteen years supporting startups and entrepreneurship. And trust me, 15, 16 years ago, that we were really the aliens. We were the aliens even in ESA for at least a decade. And that has changed. When we look at this year, how much space was present in the standard press, yeah, in Tiger Show, BBC, NZZ. So this is amazing. So space is moving much more in the general view into the center maybe not the center, but at least into a little bit the normal day-to-day -day, um, uh, uh, communication. So I think this is new. That that was, we, we were a niche subject, you know, uh, and space is really moving. And that's why, because it's more important, because we have more crazy companies, we have push from the US. So I think that's great. More PR is good because space is driving it. What I also see and... Um, we see that maybe it was Amazon, of course, and, and, and with, with uh, SpaceX, but we see normal industry moving into the market. Or I would say a lot of people in the space industry have not seen that yet. You know, ATNS in semiconductor, Flex, you know, one of the biggest system integrator in semiconductors, and other companies, they are moving into this market. And, and maybe below the radar for some, for the people really focusing on, on the changes, they see that. And I think that is good and bad. It's bad if you're sleeping, it's good if you're awake. So, and I think in, in 2020, we will see more companies moving into that. That's right. And uh, I think what I envision is that, and we will, when we come to, to the next year and the, the outlook is we will see a lot more uh, around the Green Deal and I think space has to deliver its piece in, into it. So what surprised you most this year or and what deceived you most? Yeah. And, and maybe I, it, it's, it's the connection to industry, normal industry is moving into space. You know, I'm sitting on the advisory board for the petrochemical industry, which also logistic. They look where are the digitalization, new business and so on. And what surprised me that you have still organizations and companies and I take typical my favorite German company, Deutsche Telekom, which are still sleeping. You know, of course, they have 32% shares of uh, hold by the government, but they speak about 5G and I think we had laugh time. But 5G terrestrial will be 5% of the planet. What is the rest? So, so on the one side, we have to pay them for Jaya, Jaya X because they were sleeping and not investing into the cloud for a decade. Yeah, and now we got 5G and other corporations out of America looking for connectivity from satellites. So I would say, why are they sleeping? You know, this, this, this is insane. It's the same with SAP. They see the standard business, putting a little bit data into the data room, and other 
companies and organization moving with light speed where our some of our industry things in a half impulse so i think uh, this is what really surprised me that you have the press full of the stories and they don't get it so but the good thing is in evolution there's only two ways dying out and involved so i think nature will solve that uh, and it is the same for some countries you know uk is massive in vaccine in downstream swiss is doing a great job in that luxembourg yeah so in a lot of countries space majority is still the classical space sector mr jasombek really addressed it in germany very well deal dlr moved in that direction at least the part we're working with that's good so but a lot of other countries I would say they could do much more because that's really the future. And uh, don't look to to the, the technology which is of the last century. What caught my eye and my attention this morning when I scrolled through the news feeds was our, a nice article by by Dieter Dieter Zürich from uh, Süddeutsche Zeitung, um, right, writing about Starlink's approach to Germany. So. Are, it seems that we will have in the rural areas uh, faster in uh, internet from space now or from 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 SpaceX than from any of the operators that are paid for it. That's correct, and I love the title: "Better than nothing, better." Yeah, so you try, you know, and this is and this is the vision: how to collect the last billions to the internet. So the, and, and I see it. We will see it maybe from Starlink. We see it from ST uh, satellites in Singapore. So. Uh, the, there are huge market where you cannot place a, a glass fiber. So I'm sitting here in my, my hut in the mountains. It took me a half a year, no, two months with the Deutsche Telekom to repair a couple of cable, you know, to get internet. Sorry, that is, doesn't work if you want to have a digitalized world. That's right. So let's ask concretely, what company, what entrepreneur do you consider a rising star this year? And Who is a falling? I mean, beside telecom, obviously. <laughs> yes, and and maybe I think the falling you will see because they will uh, they will scream and ask for subsidies. And of course, you know the great cases we had with uh, Daniel and his uh, colleagues with Isa Aerospace. I think that is amazing. In the south of Germany, we have three launcher companies, and and having 75 million is is really a good start. And this is also why we in Isa support them when they're very early and in clear space, and we see more laser comms and, and 5G coming. What what I really like, which I've, we have not really looked at yet as entire industry, are the platforms. Yeah, and there are two which are really always mentioned because they are examples of that. Of course, it's such search which shows what products are available it brings transparency to the market it brings uh, information to the market and that's really crucial and there's no even vc investor they really bootstrap and 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 i think this works global and i think that is a great great approach but also concept like host me to to uh, i call them always the space tinder you know finding the place on the rocket i think these new business models these two companies standing for platforms and new business models. And I think we will see more of them because it will make space cheaper. It will be more transparent and it will be also opening the industry to a new field of consumers and partners and, 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 and customers. So and I think this is so it's not only the hardware development. I think the, the see what we what we have in in other industry where we have uh, retail uh, and, and platforms, we will see these platforms much, much more coming in our space industry. It's good because it will cut out the mediator, which may be not bringing any profit. I see. I see. But I mean, you have the overview on entire Europe, I, I assume. So what you just mentioned, uh, companies in Germany or in South Germany. So. What's going on in other European countries and other ESA countries in, in there or in entrepreneurship? Do you can can you give us a glimpse on that as well? Yeah, I think the well, one thing is, of course, really the downstream sector, which is huge. And I think this is there are a lot of people using space without knowing it. Uh, where we have that we uh, and we have partners from greece to to estonia from portugal uh, and and we also cooperate worldwide you know with with russia with israel where we have very close links uh, with singapore south africa uh, brazil so that's good because uh, and we see of course and i think this is also what is changing you have companies still developing everything my cubesat and maybe they so the full system integrators 
And I think this is splitting up. So we have people, and, and this is why the platform is so important, focusing on, on their competencies. Flight avionics, thrusters, uh, programmable antennas. Yeah, and I, I think this is this is what we will move in the next years, um, and and be much more smarter in in the, the application. And I, I think this is the big trend. So you have still companies doing full components, but to be more modular, uh, I think this is what what we see to come. What is your most important learning from this year, and respectively? What do you want to do better, faster, cheaper next year? Yeah, it's, it's a very good question. Uh, and uh, I, I think th this year was helping me to, to, to shape and, 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 and to, f to understand better what I have known the last years, but it was not so visible for our group and my, my team. And it's, it's not my success, it's the success of my team. And I'm only the, the, the firefighter. So first, we only work with people which want to work with us together. Don't, and this is also my advice to the startup, don't waste time to convince people that you're good. Just don't work with them. Uh, it's, they will come and lock later on the door, maybe when it's too late. Uh, cooperation and global, cooperation, global cooperation is really the key. We have so many partners knocking on us, door, want to work with us together. And uh, I think this is what we want to do in 2021, really, really fostering cooperation and internationalization. It helps us, it helps our startups, it helps to develop the market. Uh, and, and we see that also in respect to our colleagues in the commission that uh, the startup support is more than just giving cash. It's giving really a full service. If you would be a parent, you would call it love, but it's really helping the companies when they need it, being, uh, be, being supporting with contacts, with moving blocks away, moving, uh, extinguishing fires. So really be being on their side. And this you cannot do also via a horizon call and giving just uh, somebody money to organize it. You really have to build an ecosystem. And the ecosystem is like a gardener, like the gardener in the vineyard of the Lord. Uh, and you should not see what is the first buck you can make out of it. It does not work. And if you do that right, and, and this is what the lessons learned, then it, it works. And um, advice to, to myself and to my team is always, if you're the smartest person in the room, you're in the wrong room. So I think this is something where we have to learn, team up with people which are better than us. Uh, and, and this is the international partners which we have, where we can learn every day, and maybe they learn also a little bit from us. Uh, as uh, entrepreneurship uh, is not a uh, marathon, it's a decathlon. Uh, the same is with the innovation support. It's a decathlon, and it takes time. And, and I think this is where we as an organization are great, because we can do it for a decade. Um, and I think this is what, what, what we started also with our partner network, which is the strongest force which we have in all of the member states. And we will expand that to, to, to the member states also of the European Commission to be local, not to be just in Paris or Nordweg or Darmstadt, be where the partners are, where the companies are. And we have to enable it. Uh, uh, we have to create this environment with the partners to, to support that. And I think this is the, this is the, really value why I think some of the companies can better explore the opportunities um, and doing that for not only one part of ASA, doing that for the entire ASA part. We're doing that now for launchers with the accelerator, for the SME offices, with the GSDP. Uh, so I think we should be the point of sales for space in Europe with the, our space solution incubation centers because uh, the next decade or this decade we just start, it's the decade of space. So it's up to us to have the right share, the right support, that we in five years time say, damn, we rock the market, you know, and we help that these companies were surviving and that we created the moonshots which were needed to, 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 to be successful. Absolutely. And hey, by the way, congratulations to the new DG, which was just announced. So with, which will start, I think, uh, summer next year. So oh, hey, he has a lot of talent, but he's a great guy. It, that's interesting. I mean, it's, it's, it's fresh blood. It's somebody new in, into an organization. And now we have DLR with a new uh, um, director general or ESA will, will come up. So NASA obviously will get a new one. So that's an interesting time. And um, with all these big plans that are on the horizon. But Frank, what is your personal challenge 2021? What are you running for? 
Uh, the, 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 I think we have all the same. I'm missing my events because you do business, just, you know, the same when you know each other. So at the moment, our startups, we all, we live on the emotional bank account we have built over the years, trusting us. And the good thing is in space, and the bad thing is space, the people are so long in that industry that you really can build trust. The best thing, thing if you spoil the trust, you'll, you'll burn your reputation and better you go to other industry. The problem is that we cannot build new relations. So we are just consuming out of our warehouse social bank account this relation. And this is the biggest challenge because business you do when you look into your eyes. Maybe you have a glass of beer, wine, doesn't matter, but you do it because you, you don't deal with, uh, I don't deal with uh, Space Cafe Global. I, I deal with you, Torsten, and the same with me and my, my colleagues. So to, uh, to build that, you can only do that when you're together. And when you see each other, so I'm, I'm desperate, looking forward in Q3, 4 that we have events together, hybrid, whatever, that we can go to the next level. And now we have consumed, uh, um, but it's time that we go back to, to to certain business, especially the startups have to find new customers and finding the via tools is okay, like your tools, but I think in future we need both again. Absolutely, absolutely, and I mean like. Anybody else are also, we haven't seen it on our, in our crystal ball. So we had just to adapt to the market. Yeah. I mean, space cafes where physical events are last year in Berlin too. Or so we had the plan to, uh, with a big partner to, um, to have five, um, physical events in Berlin again this year. None of them happened. So, but. You can stay at home or stick your, your head in, in, in the sand and wait, or you do something and test something. And I think one right. of the, the great stuff or we can use and with the infrastructure that we have in place is to experiment. And if a space cafe, like we started, I mean, when you look back, when we had in May, our space cafe, it was, I think the sixth episode already. So there was a learning. Was it perfect? Was it something what looks today the same? No, not at all. So we all grow on the challenges given to us if Correct. we accept them. That's 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 a point. And Justin, you know, so you have to walk before you run. And change is to salt in the soup called destiny. So and I think you adapted very well. I think you have done great. And when we go back uh, to a real space cafe, uh, I will sponsor the the drink in Q3, Q4 in Berlin uh, as a as a return for your great work you have done. We come back on that. Thank you very much, Frank. Thank you for having you are uh, in this interview today and being my guest. And I wish all of you to stay safe and stay healthy. And thanks for joining us. Uh, and I hope to, say, to see you next year. In the meantime, visit our website and follow us on social media. And don't forget, become a space watcher. Merry Christmas and a happy yes. and, a, and a better year. Merry Christmas, thank you all. And don't forget, we all need you more we space. Need more space. Take care, Frank. Ciao. Thank you.